Cystic fibrosis or CF is a common genetic disease which affects over 30,000 people in the United States. The disease is very painful as the lungs, digestive system and other organs are damaged over time. A number of treatments has been developed over time to slow down the progression of the disease. However, there is no cure for cystic fibrosis. As a consequence, patients only have a life expectancy of 30 to 40 years and they often die of respiratory diseases. However, there is still hope. New developments in the fields of gene therapy might lead to a cure for cystic fibrosis. My name is Kevin Steinig and today we talk about how we might finally be able to cure genetic diseases. Before we discuss the possibilities of gene therapy, let's talk about the underlying causes of cystic fibrosis. Cystic fibrosis is an inherited disease which is caused by mutations in CF, TR. We know about 1,700 mutations in CFTR which can cause cystic fibrosis. Since the disease only occurs if both CFTR copies in a patient are defective, we say that cystic fibrosis is recessive. This means that people who carry one mutated form and one healthy form of CFTR are not affected at all. However, if two parents carry one mutated form of CFTR respectively, then there is a 25% chance that a child will develop cystic fibrosis. Ok, but how does the disease work? On a molecule level, mutations in CFTR disrupt the flow of chloride ions. In healthy people, CFTR is a transporter protein which transports chloride ions across cell membranes. Certain mutations in a CFTR gene now disturb the production or the function of the protein. As a consequence, the regulation of chloride ions and water flow is disrupted, which leads to very sticky and thick mucus. Mucus normally protects epithelial cells in the gastrointestinal, the respiratory and the orogenital tract. Therefore, lungs and the digestive tract are mostly affected in patients. A persistent cough, repeated lung infections and intestinal blockage are common symptoms of cystic fibrosis. In the United States, all newborns are screened for cystic fibrosis through a blood test and a consequent sweat test. A sweat test is conducted by taking a sweat sample from the patient and measuring the amounts of clot ions. High amounts of clot ions are an indication for cystic fibrosis. To avoid an ineffective digestion, nutritional supplements are also given to the patient. Furthermore, antibiotics and steroids are also often given to the patients in order to reduce the risk of lung infections and inflammation. Last but not least, we can also give mucolytics to the patients, which break down the mucus. Mucolytics break down the major components of mucus, which include mucine polymers, DNA, F-actin or fibrin. Of course, these drugs do not cure the disease, as symptoms might still occur despite their administration, and the situation is very similar to what we've already seen in Alzheimer's treatments. At this point, I want to recommend you watching this episode here, as we clarify the differences between a cure and a treatment. So there are currently no cures for cystic fibrosis and you might ask yourself why am I making this video? Well, there are promising advances in the development of a cure for cystic fibrosis. And this is now quite interesting because the characteristics of cystic fibrosis which we've discussed in this video are the reason why there might be a cure very soon. And this cure might be based on gene therapy. Ok, so what is gene therapy? Gene therapy is the therapeutic delivery of nucleic acids such as DNA or mRNA into patient cells. In principle, we can pack DNA such as an intact form of CFTR into a structure which we call vehicle. Vehicles now together with DNA is administered to the patients, brought to the cell, introduced and we now have an intact form of CFTR in the patient cells. This is the very easy concept of gene therapy, however, there are many challenges. And some of these challenges include the nature of vehicles. There is currently no perfect vehicles, but there are different categories. We can use different types of viruses, such as adenoviruses, lentiviruses or retroviruses, or we can also use liposomes. Each of these types of vehicles have different advantages and disadvantages, and it will take us over an hour to really appreciate them. But we can break these differences down into four different questions. What's the maximum size of the DNA molecule we want to pack into our vector and how efficient is the delivery? Then we also have to ask if the DNA is integrated into the genome or not and how long the DNA is expressed. At this point I also want to tell you that safety is very important in gene therapy since we use viruses. And unfortunately tragedies have already occurred in clinical trials and we might maybe talk about them in another video if you're interested. 
But for now, let's go back to cystic fibrosis. As we've already discussed in the beginning of this episode, cystic fibrosis is exclusively caused by mutations or CFTR. Since the disease is caused by mutations in one gene, we say that it is a monogenetic disease. And this is also the first reason why we might cure CF using gene therapy. In this case, we only need to deliver one piece of DNA which contains a functional form of CFTR. If we wanted to cure sporadic Alzheimer's using gene therapy, we would not be very successful. As we've already discussed, Alzheimer's is mostly not driven by single mutations, and therefore we are not able to use gene therapy here. Okay, so in theory, we just deliver functional CFTR inside a vehicle to the lung tissue of cystic fibrosis patient. This might then normalize the transport of chloride ions, which might then cure the disease. Okay, but how should we now deliver our CFTR gene? As we've already mentioned, it is quite hard to find an efficient way to introduce DNA into cells. It is generally smart to locally administer our vehicle to the affected tissue, in this case, lung tissue. And this is not my personal opinion, but I think that this is one of the major advantages of curing cystic fibrosis using gene therapy. Instead of having to inject the drugs into the bloodstream, where they are immediately diluted, we can just target epithelium cells via aerosols. This means that our patient inhales the drug. This has been done in a clinical trial in 2015. In this case, liposomes were used as the vehicle. Liposomes are lipid bilayers. Compared to a control group, patients which inhaled the drug showed a significantly better FEV. FEV or forced expiratory volume is a measure for how much air a person can exhale. However, these effects were modest as the FEVs of the liposome group was only 3 to 7% better compared to the control group. It is very probable that the thick mucus significantly decreases the delivery of the drug. Currently, researchers try to assess which delivery strategy is the best. And therefore, the majority of research is conducted in animal model organisms. Last year, for example, researchers were able to recover up to 55% of net chloride flow in mice which did not have any functional CFTR. In this case, the scientists packed CFTR mRNA into lipid nanoparticles. Although these effects are very strong, the usage of mRNA compared to DNA has a major drawback. While DNA is normally very stable in nucleus, mRNA is often destroyed very fast and this means that effects do not last very long. However, it will be fascinating to see what happens in this research in the next years. If you're interested in these or similar topics, let me know in the comment section and leave a like. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell button in order to stay informed about the greatest discoveries in life sciences. And with that, I'll see ya. Thank you.